jealous daughter-in-law locked me in the closet at my own celebration because she envied me and wanted to me, since I will give my mother-in-law grandchildren before she does, and then I? The baby shower was everything I'd hoped it would be. The room was filled with laughter, and the air hummed with excitement as my friends and family mingled, cooing over the pastel decorations and taking turns guessing the baby's gender. Balloons in soft shades of pink and blue floated above the tables, which were adorned with tiny, adorable baby-themed trinkets. It was like something out of a dream, a celebration of the new life I was about to bring into the world. As I moved through the crowd, greeting everyone and accepting congratulations, I felt a sense of warmth and belonging that was almost overwhelming. My heart was so full I thought it might burst. Everyone was there. My parents, my in-laws, my childhood friends, even a few co-workers. But my favorite guest of all was my husband, Mark, who hovered nearby with a proud grin plastered on his face, as if he were the one carrying the baby. I couldn't help but laugh every time I caught him beaming at me. This was our moment, our celebration, and I wanted to savor every second. But not everyone was sharing in the joy. My sister-in-law, Emily, was standing off to the side, looking as though she'd rather be anywhere else. She wore a smile, but it was brittle, forced, and it didn't reach her eyes. Every so often, she'd glance my way, her expression darkening for just a split second before she rearranged her face into something more neutral. I knew about her struggles, how she and her husband had been trying for a baby for years with no success. I'd always try to be sensitive, careful not to bring up anything that might be a painful reminder. But now, seeing her here, I realized maybe I hadn't been careful enough. I could feel the tension between us like a thread stretched taut, and it made me uneasy. I tried to focus on my other guests, to lose myself in the joy of the day, but Emily's presence was like a thorn in my side. Every time I looked over, there she was, lurking on the periphery, a shadow in the middle of my celebration. The afternoon wore on, and as it came time to open gifts, I did my best to stay upbeat, to focus on the happiness of the moment. My friends had gone all out, tiny clothes, stuffed animals, little shoes that looked too small to even fit on a doll's feet. Each present was a reminder of the new life I was about to bring into the world, and I couldn't help but smile with every bow I untied and every bit of wrapping paper I tore away. The excitement and anticipation were infectious, and I could feel the love and support surrounding me like a warm blanket. I had almost forgotten about Emily when she approached me, a forced smile plastered on her face. Sarah, could you come with me for a moment? She asked, her tone clipped and her eyes darting around as if she were anxious to get away from the crowd. I need your help with something in the other room. I blinked, caught off guard. Now? I'm kind of in the middle of. It'll only take a second, she interrupted, her tone sharpening. There was something in her expression that made me uneasy, a hardness I hadn't seen before. But before I could ask any questions, she turned on her heel and headed toward the hallway, clearly expecting me to follow. I glanced at Mark, who was chatting with my mom across the room, but I decided not to call him over. Emily was family, after all, and I figured whatever she needed. I could help with quickly and get back to the party. So, I excused myself and followed her. My curiosity peaked but a knot forming in my stomach nonetheless. She led me down the hall and into one of the guest rooms, where she paused and gestured toward a closet. There's something I want to show you, she said, her tone oddly flat. I looked at her, confused, but I stepped closer, peering into the darkness. What's in here? I asked. But before I could say anything more, she reached around me, slamming the door shut and turning the lock with a click. For a moment, I stood there in stunned silence, trying to process what had just happened. I jiggled the handle, but it didn't budge. Panic began to set in as I realized what she'd done. Emily, I called, my voice muffled by the thick wood. What are you doing? Let me out. I pounded on the door my heart racing as the walls seemed to close in around me. This wasn't a joke. I could hear her footsteps retreating down the hall, leaving me alone in the dark, trapped and bewildered. My mind was spinning as I tried to make sense of what had just happened. Why would she do this? I thought back over the day, over the small, sharp comments, the look in her eyes when she thought no one was watching. And then it hit me. 
she was jealous, angry, resentful of the fact that I was having a baby, that I was about to start the family she'd always wanted for herself. I sank to the floor, my back pressed against the door, my breathing shallow as I tried to stay calm. I needed to get out of here, to get back to the party, to let someone know what had happened. I fumbled for my phone, but of course, I'd left it on the table in the other room. I felt trapped, helpless, the joy of the day soured by this unexpected betrayal. For what felt like an eternity, I sat there, hoping someone would come looking for me, that they'd notice I was missing and come to find me. I thought of Mark, of my friends, of everyone out there celebrating without me, blissfully unaware that I was locked in a closet, caught in the web of my sister-in-law's jealousy. Finally, I heard voices outside the door, muffled and indistinct, but getting closer. I pounded on the door again, calling out, hoping they could hear me. Hello? Is someone in there? It was Mark's voice, and I felt a rush of relief wash over me. Mark, it's me. I'm locked in here. I shouted, pressing my ear against the door. There was a pause, then the sound of a key turning in the lock, and the door swung open. Mark stood there, his face etched with confusion and concern. Sarah, what happened? Are you okay? I scrambled to my feet, brushing myself off as I stepped out of the closet, my heart still racing. Emily! She locked me in there. I stammered, still struggling to believe it myself. What? Why would she? He shook his head, looking past me as if expecting Emily to be lurking somewhere nearby. Come on, let's get you back to the party. We'll deal with this later. I nodded, letting him lead me back down the hall my mind reeling as I tried to process what had just happened. I could feel the eyes of my guests on me as I returned to the room, but I plastered on a smile, trying to act as if nothing was wrong. I wasn't going to let Emily ruin this day for me. I'd worked too hard, waited too long for this moment, and I wasn't about to let her jealousy taint it. But as the party continued, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had shifted. The joy I'd felt at the beginning of the day had been replaced by a sense of unease, a lingering question about the lengths Emily might go to, the bitterness she'd been hiding just beneath the surface. I glanced around the room, searching for her, but she was nowhere to be seen. The rest of the baby shower passed in a blur, my mind preoccupied with thoughts of what had happened, of the betrayal I'd never seen coming. I'd always thought of Emily as family, as someone I could trust but now I realized I'd been wrong. She crossed a line, and there was no going back. As the last of the guests trickled out, Mark put his arm around me, his presence a comforting anchor in the storm of emotions I was feeling. We'll talk to Emily, he said softly, his voice a promise of support. We'll figure this out. I nodded, leaning into him, but I knew that things would never be the same. Emily had shown her true colors, and now, as I looked forward to the future, I knew that I'd have to be more careful, more guarded. The celebration that had started as a joyous occasion had taken a dark turn, and as I stood there, looking around at the remnants of the party, I couldn't shake the feeling that the battle was only just beginning. Locked in the closet, I'm surrounded by darkness, my only companion the frantic rhythm of my own breathing. My heart is hammering against my ribs as I press my palms against the door, desperate for any sign of weakness any hint that it might give way. I push and pull at the handle, but it doesn't budge. The lock is solid, unyielding. I'm truly trapped. I pound on the door, shouting for help, hoping that someone, anyone, might hear me. But there's nothing. No footsteps, no voices, only the muffled hum of the party in the distance, far out of reach. I pause to listen, straining to catch the faintest sound, but it's clear that no one knows where I am. Emily had made sure of that. The realization hits me like a punch to the gut, and I feel a wave of panic rising up, tightening its grip around my chest. I'm not getting out of here anytime soon. Emily had seen to that with a calmness that now feels chilling. I slump against the wall, my legs giving out beneath me as I try to steady my breathing, to keep my thoughts from spiraling out of control. My mind is racing, darting from one thought to another, trying to make sense of the situation, to understand why she would do this. Images flashed through my mind. Moments I'd brushed off or ignored. Things that seemed trivial at the time but now feel charged with new meaning. There were those strange, 
lingering looks she'd cast my way, the way her smile would falter when our mother-in-law, Linda, fussed over me and the baby. Emily had always seemed uncomfortable when Linda would make a big deal out of my pregnancy, rubbing my belly or offering advice for the baby's room. But I'd written it off as harmless envy, something small and petty that she'd get over eventually. But now, trapped here in the dark, I see it differently. I remember the forced laughter at family gatherings, the way her voice would go tense whenever the baby was mentioned. There was a time just last month when Linda had given me a quilt she'd made for the baby. Emily had sat there, watching as Linda unfolded it, her face carefully blank, but her eyes told a different story. She'd stayed quiet, not saying a word as Linda gushed over how the quilt would look perfect in the nursery. I had brushed off the tension in the room, but now I realized she was seething. A sudden surge of anger courses through me, cutting through the panic. Emily locked me in here. She planned this. My hands ball into fists as I think of the lengths she's gone to. How she let her jealousy fester until it came to this. The betrayal stings, sharp and bitter. She's crossed a line, and there's no going back. I try again, throwing my weight against the door, hoping that maybe, if I hit it just right, it might give. But it's no use. My shoulder aches from the impact, and I feel a sinking sense of helplessness. I refuse to stay trapped like this. There has to be a way out. I glance around, my eyes straining to adjust to the dark, searching for anything I can use to my advantage. My fingers graze along the walls, feeling for a light switch, a loose board, anything that might offer a chance at freedom. My fingers catch on a shelf, and I feel around blindly until I find a small metal object, an old coat hook, barely hanging on by a screw. I twist it off, clinging to it like it's a lifeline, and attempt to wedge it into the lock praying that I can somehow jimmy it open. The minutes drag by, my efforts growing more frantic with each passing moment. I can feel my pulse in my fingertips, a steady drumbeat reminding me of just how trapped I am. The hook is flimsy, bending under the pressure, and I realize with a sinking heart that it's not going to work. I throw it aside, frustration bubbling up inside me, mingling with the panic and anger until I feel like I might explode. I sit down, pulling my knees to my chest, trying to fight back tears. Crying won't help me now, but it's hard to keep the emotions at bay. I take a few shaky breaths, forcing myself to focus, to think. I'm not going to give her the satisfaction of knowing she got to me, that she's won. I will find a way out of here, one way or another. As I sit there, trapped in the darkness, I find myself replaying every interaction I've had with Emily over the past few months. Her envy was there simmering beneath the surface, and I'd been too blinded by my own happiness to see it. I remember the time she'd offered to help me with the nursery, how she'd stood in the doorway, staring at the crib with an odd expression on her face. I'd thanked her for the offer, but she'd shrugged it off, saying something about how it must be nice to have everything fall into place so easily. I hadn't thought much of it then, but now her words echo in my mind, laced with resentment. And then there were the conversations we'd had, where she'd subtly questioned me about Linda's affection, asking if she'd shown me favoritism because of the baby. I'd laughed it off, trying to reassure her that Linda loved us both equally, that there was no reason for her to feel left out. But Emily had just nodded, a tight smile on her face, as if she didn't believe a word I said. It dawns on me just how deep her resentment goes, how much she's let it fester. I'm not just dealing with jealousy. I'm dealing with someone who's been quietly stewing, letting her anger build until she couldn't hold it back anymore. She wanted this. Wanted to hurt me. To make me feel helpless. To strip me of the joy that she feels she's been denied. The air in the closet feels thick, suffocating, and I force myself to take slow, even breaths, fighting against the creeping sense of despair. I can't stay here. I have to get out. I feel around the floor, hoping to find something anything that might be of use. My hand brushes against a small crack near the door, and I press my fingers into it, hoping I can pry it open just a little, maybe create a gap that I can squeeze through. It's no good. The crack is too narrow, and I can't get any leverage. I slam my hand against the door in frustration, the sound echoing through the small space, amplifying the silence that follows. I'm alone, completely cut off from the world outside. 
and the reality of it hits me hard. Emily didn't just lock me away. She's isolated me, stripped me of any connection to the people I love, the people who are probably out there wondering where I am. I think of Mark, of the look on his face when he realizes I'm gone, the worry that will crease his brow. He'll come looking for me. I know he will. I cling to that thought, letting it steady me, giving me a thread of hope to hold on to. Mark will find me. He has to. And when he does, I'll be ready to face Emily, to confront her about what she's done, to make her understand just how deeply she's betrayed me. But for now, all I can do is wait, trapped and helpless, with nothing but my own thoughts and the cold, hard reality of Emily's jealousy pressing in around me. I won't let this break me. I won't give her the satisfaction of seeing me crumble. I'm stronger than that. I have to be. Time crawls by, each minute stretching out into what feels like an eternity. I try to focus on my breathing, to keep my mind from spiraling into panic, but it's a constant battle. I think back to my life before all this, to the moments of happiness I'd taken for granted, to the sense of safety I'd felt just hours ago. It feels like a lifetime away now like a distant memory that's slipping through my fingers. But I'm not giving up. I refuse to let her win. She may have locked me in here, but she hasn't taken my resolve. I will find a way out. And when I do, I'll make sure Emily knows exactly what she's done, exactly how far she's pushed me. She thinks she's won, that she's taken something from me, but she's wrong. This isn't over. Not by a long shot. The moment the door swung open, blinding light flooded the small closet, and I felt a rush of relief so intense that my knees nearly gave way. My friend Jessica stood there, her face a mixture of confusion and alarm as she took in the sight of me, crumpled on the floor, hands still clutching the edges of the door. Sarah, are you okay? What on earth happened? She asked, her voice rising in panic. I scrambled to my feet, brushing myself off and trying to steady my breathing. My thoughts were still racing, and my body felt like it was on high alert, every nerve buzzing with a mix of anger and fear. But I didn't have time to process it all right now. There was only one thing on my mind, and that was confronting Emily. Emily locked me in here. I managed to say, my voice tight. I could barely believe the words myself, but I knew what I'd seen, knew what I'd heard. Jessica's eyes widened in shock, her mouth opening as if to say something, but I didn't wait for her response. I brushed past her and headed down the hall, my heart pounding as I sought out Emily. I found her in the living room, chatting casually with a group of family members, as if nothing had happened, as if she hadn't just locked me away and left me to rot in that closet. The sight of her, so nonchalant, so indifferent, sent a surge of fury through me. I strode over, my steps quick and deliberate, and without waiting for an opportune moment, I spoke up. Emily. My voice came out sharper than I intended, cutting through the hum of conversation. All heads turned to look at me, confusion and concern flickering across their faces. Emily glanced over, her expression freezing for a split second before she composed herself, her eyes narrowing. Yes, Sarah, she asked, her tone guarded. But there was a flicker of something behind her eyes. Fear, perhaps, or maybe guilt. Don't play coy with me, I said my voice trembling with barely restrained anger. Why did you lock me in that closet? What were you thinking? Gasps rippled through the room, and I could feel the weight of everyone's gaze on us, their eyes bouncing between me and Emily as they tried to make sense of what was happening. Emily's face flushed, and for a moment, I thought she was going to deny it, to feign innocence and claim that I was making it all up. Sarah, I don't know what you're talking about, she said, but there was a crack in her voice, a hesitation that gave her away. Her eyes flicked around the room, landing on family members who were watching her, waiting for an explanation. Stop lying. I shot back, my voice rising. You locked me in that closet and left me there. I want to know why. For a moment, Emily looked like she might keep up the pretense, but then something in her broke. Her shoulders slumped, and she looked away, a flash of shame passing over her face. Fine, she muttered, her voice barely audible. Yes, I locked you in there. A murmur ran through the room, and I saw my husband, Mark, step forward, his face a mask of shock and disbelief. Emily, 
What the hell? He said, his voice laced with anger. Why would you do something like that? Emily took a deep breath, her gaze fixed on the floor as if she couldn't bear to look any of us in the eye. Because I couldn't stand it anymore, she finally said, her voice trembling. I couldn't stand watching Sarah get everything I've ever wanted, everything that I've been denied. The room fell into a stunned silence, and I felt a chill run down my spine. I'd known she was jealous, had suspected that her resentment ran deep, but hearing her admit it out loud was a different kind of shock, a confirmation of everything I'd feared. Emily looked up, and there was a bitterness in her eyes that I'd never seen before, a raw pain that twisted her features into something almost unrecognizable. Do you have any idea what it's like? She asked, her voice rising, a note of desperation creeping in. Do you know what it's like to watch someone else get everything you've ever wanted while you're left with nothing? To watch Linda fawn over you, fuss over your baby, while I can barely stand to be in the same room. Linda, who had been standing nearby, gasped, her hand flying to her mouth as tears filled her eyes. Emily, I had no idea you felt this way. I love you too. Do you? Emily cut her off, her tone sharp and accusatory. Because it sure doesn't feel that way. Ever since Sarah got pregnant, all you can talk about is the baby, Sarah's baby, as if my struggles mean nothing to you, as if I'm invisible. I could see the hurt in Linda's eyes, the confusion, the guilt, but I was too focused on Emily to offer any comfort. My anger was still simmering, the betrayal still too fresh. You don't get to take your jealousy out on me, I said, my voice steady but cold. You don't get to ruin my baby shower? to lock me in a closet and make me feel helpless, just because you're hurting. That's not fair. It's cruel. Emily's face twisted, and she looked away, crossing her arms defensively. I just, I wanted you to know what it felt like, okay? To feel trapped, to feel like you're losing everything. I wanted you to understand, even if just for a moment, what it's like to have something taken from you. A part of me wanted to lash out, to tell her exactly how much she'd hurt me, how deeply she'd betrayed the trust one thought we'd had. But as I looked at her, I saw something else, an emptiness, a sadness that ran deeper than I'd realized. It didn't excuse what she'd done, but it made me pause, made me see that her actions were driven not by malice, but by a pain that had festered for far too long. I get that you're hurting, Emily, I said, my tone softer now, though the anger still simmered beneath the surface. But you can't use that as an excuse to hurt other people. You need to deal with your issues, not take them out on me. The room was deathly silent as I spoke, and I could feel the tension hanging heavy in the air, thick and suffocating. Family members shifted uncomfortably, casting glances at one another, unsure of where to look or what to say. The revelation had drawn lines in the sand, dividing us in ways that would not easily be mended. Mark stepped forward placing a protective hand on my shoulder. I think it's best if you leave, Emily, he said, his voice calm but firm. You've caused enough damage today. Emily looked at him, a flash of hurt crossing her face, but she nodded, her shoulders slumping as she turned to leave. She didn't say goodbye, didn't offer any final words of apology or explanation. She just walked out, her head bowed, leaving behind a room full of people who were trying to process what had just happened. As the door closed behind her, I felt a strange mix of emotions, relief, sadness, anger, and a lingering sense of betrayal that clung to me like a shadow. I knew that this was far from over, that the wounds Emily had inflicted would take time to heal. But I also knew that I couldn't let her actions ruin what was meant to be a joyous time in my life. I turned to my family, to Linda and Mark and the others who had watched the scene unfold, and I took a deep breath forcing myself to smile. I'm sorry for all of this, I said, my voice steady despite the turmoil churning inside me. I didn't mean for today to go this way. Linda stepped forward, her eyes brimming with tears as she wrapped me in a tight hug. None of this is your fault, Sarah, she murmured, her voice thick with emotion. We'll get through this together. Your family and we love you. I nodded, leaning into her embrace, feeling a sense of warmth and support that I'd almost forgotten in the midst of the chaos. The rest of the family gathered around, offering words of comfort, of reassurance, 
and I felt a flicker of hope, a reminder that, despite everything, I was not alone. As we stood there, surrounded by loved ones, I knew that the road ahead would not be easy, that the wounds Emily had inflicted would not heal overnight. But I also knew that I had a family who loved me, who would stand by me no matter what. And with them by my side, I felt ready to face whatever came next, to rebuild the trust that had been shattered, and to move forward with a renewed sense of strength and determination. Emily may have tried to tear me down, to steal my joy, but she hadn't succeeded. I was still standing, still surrounded by love and support, and I knew that I would emerge from this stronger than before. The revelation of her jealousy had shaken me, but it had also shown me the depth of my own resilience, the strength of the bonds I'd built with those who truly cared for me. And as I looked around the room, at the faces of those who stood by me, I knew that I would not let her actions define me. This was my life, my family, my future, and I was ready to claim it with open arms, to embrace the love and support that would carry me through the trials ahead. In the days following the baby shower, I felt as if I were in a strange limbo, suspended between the desire to move forward and the weight of everything that had happened. I kept replaying the confrontation with Emily, her words echoing in my mind, the pain and bitterness etched across her face. It left a bruise, a lingering ache that I couldn't shake. I'd always thought family was a source of safety and love, but now, I found myself questioning everything I'd taken for granted. Linda reached out to me first. She called one afternoon, her voice thick with worry and remorse. I could hear the strain in her tone, the guilt that seemed to seep through every word. Sarah, I can't express how sorry I am for what happened, she said, her voice barely a whisper. I should have seen it coming. I should have noticed Emily's pain and resentment, but I didn't. I feel like I failed you both. There was a pause, as if she were waiting for me to absolve her, to tell her that it wasn't her fault, that none of us had seen it coming. But I didn't have the energy for reassurance, didn't feel like I owed her that kind of forgiveness. She may not have known what Emily was capable of, but I couldn't forget that her favoritism had fueled Emily's resentment. She played a part, even if unintentionally, and I wasn't sure I could overlook that. I appreciate the apology, Linda, I replied, keeping my tone steady. But I need time. I need to figure out what's best for me and the baby. I can't keep putting myself in situations where I feel unsafe. I hope you understand. I could hear the catch in her breath, the way she faltered before replying. Of course, Sarah. Take all the time you need. Just know that I love you and the baby. We're family and I'll always be here for you. I hung up, feeling a strange sense of relief mixed with sadness. I knew that Linda's apology was genuine, that she was probably hurting as much as I was, but I couldn't shake the feeling that it was too little, too late. There were cracks in our relationship now, fissures that couldn't be smoothed over with a few words. Trust had been broken, and it would take more than an apology to rebuild it. Emily's attempt at reconciliation came next in the form of a carefully worded email. I remember sitting down to read it, my heart pounding as I opened the message. I half expected a litany of excuses, a plea for understanding, but what I found was something simpler, almost painfully raw. Sarah, I'm so sorry for what I did. There's no excuse for my behavior, and I can't imagine how much I must have hurt you. I've been so consumed by my own envy and pain that I lost sight of everything else. I know you may never forgive me, but I hope one day you can understand that it was never about you. It was about me and my inability to cope with my own struggles. If you're willing, I'd like to meet and talk things through. I know it's a lot to ask, but I hope you'll consider it. Emily, I stared at the words, reading them over and over, trying to gauge their sincerity. A part of me felt a flicker of sympathy for her, a recognition of the pain that had driven her to act the way she did. But another part of me, the part that remembered the feeling of being trapped in that closet, the sense of betrayal and fear, held firm. I wasn't sure I could face her, wasn't sure I was ready to forgive or forget. In the end, I decided not to respond, at least not yet. I needed time to think, to process everything that had happened. I wasn't sure what to believe, wasn't sure if I could trust her words. Emily had shown me a side of her that I hadn't known existed and it wasn't something I could easily forget. As the days passed, 
I found myself drawn to the idea of a fresh start, a chance to rebuild my life away from the shadow of family drama. Mark and I talked about it one evening, sitting together in the living room, the remnants of the baby shower decorations still scattered around us. He wrapped his arm around me, his presence a steady anchor as we discussed the possibility of moving away, of finding a new place to call home. Maybe this is our chance, I said, my voice soft but resolute. Maybe we need to get away, to start fresh somewhere else, where we can focus on our family and not have to worry about the rest. He nodded, his gaze thoughtful. I've been thinking the same thing. We've been so wrapped up in trying to keep the peace, to make everyone happy. Maybe it's time we focused on us, on what's best for you and the baby. The idea filled me with a sense of hope, a glimmer of something new and untainted by the pain of the past few weeks. I could see it, this new life we could build together, free from the weight of old wounds and lingering resentments. It wouldn't be easy, leaving behind the people and places we knew, but I was ready. I wanted a fresh start, a chance to protect my family from the kind of toxicity that had seeped into my relationship with Emily and Linda. I'd learned a lot from the experience, more than I'd ever wanted to know about jealousy and bitterness, about the way people could hide their true feelings beneath a veneer of civility. But I'd also learned about strength, about the resilience that came from facing betrayal head-on and refusing to let it define me. I knew now that I could stand on my own, that I could protect myself and my family, no matter what challenges lay ahead. In the end, I realized that family wasn't about blood or obligation. It was about the people who truly cared, the ones who stood by you through thick and thin, who loved you unconditionally. And while I wasn't ready to shut the door entirely on Linda or Emily, I knew I needed to keep my distance, to build boundaries that would protect me from further hurt. We began to make plans, looking at new places, dreaming of a future that was ours and ours alone. It was bittersweet, saying goodbye to the life we'd known, but I knew it was the right choice. I was ready to embrace motherhood, to step into this new chapter with a renewed sense of purpose and independence. I didn't need to cling to old relationships or try to fix what was broken. I was ready to move forward, to let go of the past and build a future that was free from the shadows of betrayal and jealousy. As I stood in the nursery one last time, looking around at the tiny clothes and the crib we'd carefully assembled, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. This was my family now, my home, my sanctuary, and I would do whatever it took to protect it, to ensure that my child would grow up surrounded by love and support, free from the kind of pain that had marked my relationship with Emily. I was ready to pick up the pieces, to rebuild my life on my terms, and to face whatever the future held with open arms and an open heart. This was my story now, my journey, and I knew that I had the strength to see it through. I would carry the lessons I'd learned with me, but I would not let them hold me back. I was ready to start anew to embrace the love that surrounded me, and to build a future filled with hope, resilience, and unwavering determination. If you like this story, subscribe right away and listen to new stories every day. Let us know what you like the most in the comments.